on this episode of Good Enough Motorsport, we're having a breakdown. But a most positive one indeed. So, for anyone wondering, this is somewhat of an independent action. I just couldn't wait to get cracking on the 4AG. And, um, Marcel and Marcelin are not tagging along today because it's uh, Sunday at the time of recording and they like to have a really off day to just chill, which I can respect. I would too, but I just want to get cracking on this bad boy too fucking bad. I'm gonna get on it, I'm gonna take you along for this ride, and oh what a ride it is going to be, I'm willing to bet. Let's get it time-lapse going hopefully I can at least get the head off today but if I can get more done I'm gonna get on it
Well, it's been a few hours later, and it may not seem like much progress because it was mostly hidden, but I managed to uh, get it down to no uh, intake manifold anymore. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna need to find where uh, top of the center is here. There should be. Ah! There's a dimple here. A dimple there. But also one there. So, wait, what? There's a notch here. Uh, yeah, Toyota. Eyes confuse. Your bamboo. Bamboo. losing. Yeah, the bamboozle is getting severe here. So, yeah. Uh, this is next. I will attempt to remove that tranquilly. That should prove uh, frightfully challenging. Alright, here we go. So. I'm actually at 5 before top the center, but yes, there's this notch in the crank pulley, should be at 0, and then the dimples on the gears and the little notches in the valve cover. Wow! It's almost like Toyota intended us to work on these engines! Thank you, Toyota! I love it! I hate some of your other shit, but this, I love! So, I was debating, debating in my head whether or not Marco's uh, impact had enough power to crack the uh, crank pulley bolt loose. And I'm not sure. I'm unconvinced. Which does make it a perfect opportunity to test out if father's impact has enough power. I think it might. No guarantee, but I think this might do it. Alright then, here goes nothing. There we go. 19 mil. We gotta slap it in. Alright, let's try this. Ho ho! Yosha! I'm pretty sure those uh, bolts included with the puller are imperial. I'm not proud of me for really forcing them in a uh, metric style card, but I decided fuck it. This is getting replaced anyway. But look what a charm it is! is coming out so easily. I think it's almost set. Uh, almost all the way up. Oh um, baby. Oh god damn it, I maxed it out. <laughs> Look at it. There we go. I can remove this last piece of timing cover with the two ten mils here. Alright, so I got the timing belt off. I was a bit stuck as to the tensioner, how to remove this tensioner. And I looked it up on Google and it said, uh, forum said you can just unbolt it and pull it out and it won't damage anything. The worst it did is touch this uh, pulley a little bit and then uh, yeah, this is quite stiff, so that tells me it's still good. I've seen a few videos where the tensioner has gone bad and the owners are just pushing it, pushing it in like it's nothing, so that's a no-no, but this one is a good good. Now I have loosened the uh, 
uh, water pump bolts. And I know what kind of a mess is coming up. So I have drain pans standing by. Big hose. Hopefully, I can break it free from it. Yes. Oh, goodness. I expected a mess, but wow. I didn't expect that much of a mess. What is this thing here? Is it uh, a guide for the water? That's a strange little uh, apparatus here. And here we are with the valve cover off. Now I do not know how good of a condition this is in. This lobe here has some small marks that does cause me concern. The rest of it is hard to say. I will have to dismantle the can caps and inspect them further. But the um, rule of thumb, at least for tightening them, and it would make sense to release them, is to start from the center and work our way outside. What is really gonna test my skill and patience is under the cap. The cams and the caps. This is the cap, this is the cam, and those are the, um, the valve buckets. So basically, uh, for the uninitiated, the uh, cam lobes push down on the valve via these buckets, and under the bucket, where is it over? Well, I believe those are under shims. Under the bucket, there is a shim. And it's a, a precise measurement. There is a shim under the bucket that then pushes the valve down, open. And well, you don't want to take the, the shim from this valve bucket and put it into this one because the tolerances might be off. So of course we don't want that. So it will be crucial that I take my time, come the fuck down start my way from piston one, valve one, uh, have a, a magnet, pull out the bucket, write it down, and put it all into their own container, so I don't mix it up. Some of you may be familiar with the uh, channel I Do Cars, where he just dismantles broken engines and such. I'm gonna take a page from his book and share with you ASMR Fricos, of which I am one, the, um, the cracking of the bolts for the cam caps. Oh wow, the cam cap is already coming loose. I should also number them. Wow. Actually, I might not even have to. But they seem to have stamping, like that center cap has a stamping of an arrow pointing to the front of the motor. Again, Toyota, very. Uh, Toyota being very proactive, very helpful, letting the people work on, the, on their cars, just making it foolproof, like, hey, dummy, it goes that way. Which I respect and I appreciate. Because I'm the dummy who would mount it the wrong way by accident. That would be ungood. Oh, I don't have smell of vision, and it, it is for this in that way. But anyone who's already, already taken an engine apart will know that smell like. Especially at that stage, that smell of roasted oil 
Oh well, 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 well. Once again, Toyota coming through with their amazing planning skills. You'll notice a small E here, that is for the exhaust side. And on the second cam cap, there's an E2 with an arrow pointing to the front of the engine. E3, E4, and E5. Same on the intake, intake side. Take 5, 4, 3, 2, and of course 1. I was stressing over, oh, I'm gonna have to mark every single one of them, I don't wanna mess it up. Toyota did it for me. Arigato gozaimasu, Toyota. Sit rep. Got the camshafts off. All the shims identified. We'll now proceed to pull them out and store them in a uh, some kind of cabinet. All right, folks, this is it. Cams are off. Head bolts are out. I mean, oh, heads off. Head is officially off. So I'm referring to that. So okay, carbon deposits, not unheard of for you know an internal combustion engine. But what do we got here? Mm-hmm. Alright. I still see some cross hatching. I believe that's what it is. This is looking fine. Little ridge of carbon that is to be expected. Of course, without pulling them out, there is no way of knowing uh, how the rings are. But this texturing, I wonder if this is uh, something to be worried about. So I managed to get get it done. So, what do we see in here? Much of anything, really. It's looking, eh, alright. As far as I can tell. How about here? What do we have? We have the uh, the baffle plate or uh, windage tray, as it is. Sorry. This is another part in itself that is uh, sealed in quite fiercely, I must say. Here it is, the belly of the beast. And I know I'm uh, cutting you guys out of a lot of the wrenching that goes into this, but uh, it's just very time consuming and I just want to get it done. And GoPros eat batteries super stupid fucking fast. Yeah, it's just a pain all around to have to deal with such limited battery time. I have spares and still those cameras go through them like candy. All that's left really is the rear main seal, the main caps and piston themselves. Other than that, it's it's a short block, almost a bare one, and that will come, but it's gonna be for another time. So it is a week later, and um, the Master Racing team was originally planned to join me on this endeavor of pulling the pistons and the crank. But unforeseen circumstances mean that uh, they are not able to join me at this point in time. 
spawn bomber, but it's the name of the game, that's in which he goes. So, I'm now down to the blood, I removed the rear main seal, which is here, and you can see it was leaking quite a lot of oil. So, like I said, down to the block, the crank, and the piston. So, let us undo. Let us undo this whole mess. Which, ironically enough, is quite clean. Okay, so I may have undone a few of those last week. The crank! Oof! Heavy boy! Ooh! That smell! That roasted oil smell, I keep going on about it, but this. This smells it more than anything else. Okay. Now I know I can put the block of wood in there, so I'm just gonna. It in. Just a tappy tap. Fuck! I did not need that. God damn it. Well. A lot of work has gone on here, and a lot has been happening. Uh, however, considering that my dad doesn't like to be on camera, I wasn't able to uh, shoot as you know, intensely as I would like. But we're down to a pair of blocks. Pair of fucking blocks, that is it. And this here is what we're looking at. Well, as I mentioned, Bear block. So, my dad used a um, piston ring to measure the bore in three steps top, middle, and bottom. And those two are the more worn out, but it should all be able to be thrown back together like. Standard spec, no overboard, nothing like that, which is good news. But I still need to order the parts, regardless. So, uh, the head gasket I had removed uh, last week, my dad went over it with this, uh, this brush here on a drill and removed the, um, the sticky gasket residue, like what keeps it stuck on there. And, well, I had previously went over it with a razor blade. As for the sound, uh, the compressor is shut off, and there's a piston and con rod in the uh, ultrasound spinner. Uh, two have already been in there, and they came out looking just about good as new, which is quite encouraging. Number four. Four is the least encouraging one, but my dad assures me that it doesn't look good, but it should still be able to perform like like it's nothing. So 
Considering he's built more engines than I have, I'll take his word for it. So, yeah, today's pretty much a short episode. And as for the crank, uh, it's looking pretty good. Again, I'm taking my dad's word for it, but I'll trust him. And uh, we'll just uh, send down the... Um, what are those? No, those are not bearing, like the, the journals or whatever. Like, send this down at the tad, maybe get according bearings to uh, accommodate for the ever so slight smaller diameter that it will become, but uh, this is neither there nor here as of right now. Uh, the head, the head that is a point of contention. That's actually quite a bit of a bummer. We were not able to remove the valves from the head as I would have hoped. Because this uh, spring compressor seems to put, is unable to reach in there and get to the valves, neither on the exhaust or on the intake side. So, you need to look for another tool, a more adapted tool for this purpose, or have a shop do it, which I'm not super fond of. But at this point, it's like, it might be one of the, my only two options. Get the right tool, or have someone do it. Meaning, more money. So that's a bit of a conundrum. And I want the valves out of there, of course, because I want to see the state of the valve seals. And I also want to have the head, the ports, uh, polished, like put it out and polish, not massively, but just to make it real nice and smooth. So that's an ongoing project. Well, everything is an ongoing project. This will need to be worked on. So will this. Uh, this, I, this would pretty much be ready to reassemble, but we're not there yet. We don't have the, the parts, like the gasket, the piston rings and all that. We don't have them. So that's also going to have to wait, but that is the closest to being ready to reassemble. That's about it for today. Not super productive, but, you know, well, actually a lot did happen. Like, I finished the teardown, so that's cool. But aside from that, small roadblock. We'll need to work on it, get back to it, and keep ranching on. So, that's that. And that is the part two, I guess, of this engine rebuild. Part one being pulling it out of the car. Part two, the teardown. I'll keep you posted on the goodies I ordered for this baby because goodies are a coming. And well, see you on the next episode of Good Enough Motorsport.